हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर दिव्या मदान है कंटिन्यूइंग विद द फिजियोलॉजी सीरीज पेज बाय पेज के नॉन्स फिजियोलॉजी दिस इज द पार्ट थ्री वी आर डिस्कसिंग एक्साइटेबल टिश्यू नो चैप्टर फोर फ्रॉम गेनॉक्स एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हेयर इन दिस वीडियो एक्सोनल ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड हाउ एक्साइटेशन एंड कंडक्शन हैपन्स विद इन द एक्सॉन सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी हैव डिस्कस द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अ टिपिकल न्यूरॉन द सेल बॉडी द एक्सॉन एंड The cell body is the factory where all the secretory vesicles and neurotransmitters are synthesized. Exon is a is like conduit where these transmitters are released into. And lastly, terminal boutons there 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 is the release of the synthesized neurotransmitters. The cytoplasm of this exon is known as exoplasm, and transport of all these secretory cells happens within the exoplasm, and this is known as exoplasmic flow. now comes the concept of orthograde transport and retrograde transport when the transport is from the cell body through the exon to the terminal boutons it is known as orthograde transport and when the reverse happens that is there is transport of substances from the terminal boutons towards the cell body that is the retrograde transport the orthograde transport happens with the help of two molecular motors these are dynein and kinesin you can see here this is a beautiful diagram kinesin protein is drawn dynein protein is drawn whereas retrograde transport from the exon terminal towards the cell body happens with the help of microtubules right when we talk about orthograde transport there are two components one is the fast component one is the slow component the fast component occurs at a faster rate that is 400 mm per day whereas slow exonal transport happens at a slower rate that is 0.5 to 10 mm per day whereas retrograde transport occurs along the microtubules at a rate of 200 mm per day these are all to be crammed up and sadly these are asked in the your competitive exams and once you make notes and revise again and again you will remember them reflexly there is no shortcut to it okay so uh, also the question happens we all know that uh, orthograde transport is required for our conduction but what happens in retrograde transport certain nerve growth factors certain viruses they gain their uh, way into the neuron by this route so it is important uh, some viruses are also transported back to the cell body now this is a homework for you guys you have to read up microbiology that which virus gains enter into the nerve through this route and tell me in the comment section below that which of these virus uses the retrograde transport into the nerve okay so now coming on to excitation and conduction uh, the name of this chapter is excitable tissue nerve so we know that the hallmark of nerve cells is that it is a, it has an excitable membrane it is an excitable tissue and it responds to various electrical chemical and mechanical stimulus now uh, there are two types of uh, physico chemical disturbances that can be produced one is the local one local one happens at a local place and it is not propagated non propagated right these can be these other name of these non propagated and local potentials are synaptic generator or electrotonic potential whereas the second type of potential that is propagated potential that is these uh, potential differences would be transferred on right these are known as axon potential or nerve impulses when you are thinking about nerves uh, genong has given a really good analogy that nerves are not just like telephone wires that transmit signal from one, one place to another these are not co conduits these are not passive wires that transmit the signal it is an active process at each and every point of that wire there happens changes in the uh, membrane potential that leads to conduction of the message right so you have there is a line written here that nerves are not telephone wires that transmit impulses passively and even if if passive conduction has to happen the nerve would be a very poor passive conductor and it would take a potential of many volts to produce a signal actually this is a active process a self propagating process and this special property is due to uh, excitable membrane there comes uh, then the concept of resting membrane potential 
uh, when we talk about resting membrane potential is that a potential that is across the cell membrane when the cell is at rest. What do you mean by that? Uh, it means that uh, there uh, again a beautiful example is given. They are saying that if I have this nerve membrane and I put two electrodes over it. One electrode is here, another electrode is here. And I calculate the potential difference between these two. It would be zero. But if I connect one electrode over the surface and another inside the cell membrane, then I will find the potential difference. What that means? That means that due to different proportion of ions inside and outside the cell, the charge on the surface of the nerve is different from the charge which is inside and that what makes this excitable. There comes the potential difference that is known as resting membrane potential. Uh, we all know that the intracellular potassium ion is more and extracellular your sodium ion is more, right? And also the inside of the cell is more negative as compared to outside. So imagine uh, you, uh, there is an inside of the cell, this is the inside cytoplasm of the cell and this is the outside of the cell. Now inside there is a lot of potassium ions. So uh, what would happen to these potassium ions, they feel like they are so congested here, they are so much here and when they look outside there are very few potassium ions. So they will feel like you should go out, right? So along the gradient, potassium will try to move out and what will happen to the sodium? Outside the cells, there are lot there are lot of sodium ions, right? They'll try to go inside the cell, along the gradient, right? This would happen only through specific channels and pores that are found in the membrane, right? Through the gate, there would be few leaky channels as well, where they will jump on, right? So at rest, the resting membrane potential is minus seventy millivolt of a neuron, and at this maximum number of potassium channels are open. So what will happen? Potassium will try to move out of the cell, right? By moving out of the cell, there will come a point when all the potassium ion will dissipate and obviously the, the membrane potential that was once there will be lost, right? So to maintain this, we have a really beautiful channel that is sodium potassium ATPS channel. What the sodium potassium ATPS channel does, it moves the potassium and sodium ions outside their gradient. What do, do, what do I mean outside the gradient? We have learned here that sodium ions are more outside the cell, right? What they do? They try to move along the gradient outside to inside. But the sodium potassium ATPase channel with the help of ATP actively moves it against the gradient. That is, they will push sodium ions from the inside to the outside. That is against the gradient, right? So by maintaining these uh, balance of the ions, the sodium potassium uh, ATPase channel maintain the gradient, right? So that's all about resting membrane potential, how ion fluxes, excitation and conduction takes place and how external transport takes place. Uh, and that's all for today's video. In the next video, we will discuss all about action potential, how this action potential is generated, what is the positive feedback loop, what is the negative feedback loop, what are all in non potentials? Uh, see you in the next video. I hope this is helpful and I hope you are reading your norm side by side and uh, clearing your concept and solving MCQs along with it because I feel like MCQs are a great way to check uh, whether your concepts are right. I hope uh, this is helpful. See you next time in another video. Bye bye.